Hi, this is Dean. I'm going to explain the uh, benefits of an action-oriented architecture. Um, let me introduce you to uh, an application here that uses Redux, actually, um, to manage its local state. We can see the Redux dev tools telling us that our current global set of the world uh, is an array of foo, an array under the key foo containing zero items. As we save more foos, we see a couple different things happening. We see um, these little alerts being popped up in the UI. We see messages going on in the console. They're all describing this object uh, with type foo save and a payload of the numeric value of what's in there. We also see in Redux Dev Tools the uh, actions that are occurring and their payloads which our payloads are, you know, the contents of the action, essentially. And then we see the state growing. We uh, also see, this looks like an old version of the server, actually. Uh, let's restart the server. <clears throat> we also see that the server is ch uh, chipping away on receiving copies of, these, of this state as it goes. We got another view of the state in the client side that uses this tree architecture and we can say uh, add more foos and we will see them updating the state tree. So Redux is a really nice state management platform which can be used in Meteor. I picture it as a layer between the user's interface and Mongo. It's a series of actions, these actions that you're seeing in the list, and every change to the state of the world is mediated through these actions. So Redux has this concept of a reducer, which I'll get into later. Um, but in the meantime, just take a look at how uh, everything um, is using Meteor really nicely done. So for example, you saw as the app was restarting, there were four and five, saves of four and five that were in flight. And it wasn't until the app came all the way up and got caught up that we got the alert that five was saved. So this is like asynchronous, fully asynchronous by default, it's also highly validated. So if we put in something that's not a number, I didn't tell you this, but foo uh, can only save uh, things that are numbers, we see that um, we're getting uh, error handling, explaining exactly what went wrong. We're also seeing that those things that aren't numbers are not getting sent to the server. So we're doing the right thing of having server-side validation at the end of the day, but client-side validation um, before that. So, I'm going to show you how this app is actually put together. All right, so inside of this Meteor project, which is based on base and uses React, we have a button and an input. And the input starts with a value, and we have a click handler that fetches the value out of the argument input and then calls a method save foo RPC with that value. Save foo coming from a library it imports called import startup methods. Now save foo RPC is named RPC because it is going to send something over the wire but it's actually an implementation of a meteor method that you can call in synchronous style. It actually returns a promise. So um, to call that in synchronous style, we've declared uh, foo.save, and foo.save is the effect of exactly calling um, this method right there. So you can foo.save a 234, and there we go. Action with payload of 234 was dispatched, and it was successful. And we also saw that a moment later, the server got updated with 234. Likewise, if we um, do a save and it is not a valid value, uh, we're actually getting a, uh, the BERT handles that. And so um, we have basically, it would have been a rejected promise in the console, but um, we handled the rejection in the save foo RPC. So let me show you the save foo RPC method. Okay, in save foo RPC, we are going to be calling a dispatcher, and the dispatcher is going to be like a compound dispatcher. 
it's going to be a dispatcher that updates the client store. So there is a Redux store, which is like a database, but it um, is just in memory. It's basically plain old JavaScript objects is what, a, is what a store is. So we have a store running on the server, and we have a store running on the client, and we have methods uh, to update both the server and the client. So this is defined using a thin wrapper called unimethod on top of meteor.methods. And it actually uses similar syntax to Meteor's uh, own MDG validated method package that they describe in the Meteor guide. I highly suggest you take a look at that. So you see we've defined a validation function. This validation function will run on the client and the server. We've defined the client stub which uh, is going to actually have slightly different action than the server method, but we define both parts of this here. And basically, it does a console log. It calls store.dispatch with the action. That's the real meat and, meat and potatoes of the method. And then after the store has had that action uh, applied to it, we'll return store.getState. So on the client, we don't mind doing this because even though the store is like a large item, uh, to get it back is just there's nothing going on across the server. So on the server, uh, on the server we have an action, we do a log, we apply it to the store, we get the new state of the store. We don't actually return it because we don't want it to be returned over the wire. There's no need to return it over wire over the wire. The the client already has its own uh, version of the store that grows with every successful save. So we don't need to send this piece of state all the way back over the wire to the client. So all we do is console log and, uh, and let it be. Now what we could do is actually um, notify other clients of, of this in the server method. We could um, you know, update a publication that basically uh, allows us to push out notifications of all of these changes, but that's going to be discussed in a, uh, in a separate uh, tutorial. Okay, so there's three things left to explain. One, when we called save foo RPC, how did it interact with this uh, dispatching uh, meteor method? And then two and three, where's the definition for the Redux store, reducer, and actions? Because we see action objects flying by and we want to understand how Clicking here creates an action object, applies it to the store, applies it to the remote store, and uh, ha handles validation. So let's go into where SafeFu RPC is defined in methods. It's right down here. So before I explain it, I want to explain that dispatch RPC is something returned from unimethod.methods. Unimethod.methods, unlike meteor.methods, it actually creates an object in the shape of what you passed it, where each key is a function. So dispatch RPC is an actual function, which we're going to call right here inside of save foo RPC. Okay? Save foo RPC takes the user's value, which is a string because it comes directly off the DOM. It tries to turn it into a number. Um, otherwise, if it can't, it'll just use the string that it is, and then it calls uh, an action creator, save foo with the value. And the return value of save foo is the action, and the action is this object that you see here and in BERT. Save foo returns an object with what you passed it in the payload field and the string foo save in the type field. It calls dispatch RPC. Dispatch RPC, of course, is the, the server and client side isomorphic method and either side you can just call it with parens passing an action and because we know that this is sending something over the wire we actually get a promise for when the server uh, is done applying it and onto that promise we can chain the uh, BERT.alert that um, shows the action in the good case and then shows the error message in the bad case. So that is save foo RPC. Just a little argument manipulation, creating the action, dispatching the action, 
the action on the client runs through this client stub, gets applied to the store. On the server, when it receives the same action over the wire, caught action, blah, 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 the server applies it to its store. It does not return the store because it does not need to inform the client of any additional state. And it, uh, and it logs, and then it's on its merry way. So if you looked at the body of this essentially meteor method and just said, where is it doing things? All I see is calling store.dispatch. Well, the actual doing things is taken care of in some, what's called the reducer. <clears throat> the reducer is living inside of the store file. It's integral to defining the store. And one other thing that's easier to explain than the reducer that's also defined in uh, defining the store is this DevTools extension. So in non-production code, maybe even in production code, but probably not, you're going to hook this DevTools extension onto your store so it can listen for everything. And so that's the only piece of indirection between the create store method that comes from the Redux library and the reducer function that you define. So essentially, whether or not you're using the DevTools extension that determines your store factory, you give it a reducer, and that's your store. Now you have a thing that can apply actions. So the real logic that takes place is inside a reducer. Now you noticed our state tree has a key called foo. The brilliant thing about Redux and how it lets you structure your applications really cleanly is right here, this object that we give to combine reducers sets up the key foo in our state and all of the logic that is associated with it. So let me break this down so it's very dense. Number one is its initial value. If we go back to log, we see that at the very, very beginning, foo started out as an empty array. So our initial value is passed to create reducer. A map is also create, passed to create reducer. And the map contains actions that you want to respond to. And then functions which accept uh, the existing state of the, of the key, so the array of foos in the variable haystack, and then the new foo that is being saved, so in other words, the payload in the variable needle. And as a good reducer does, it doesn't modify the haystack, the existing foo array. It basically returns a new array. This is some fancy syntax here, but the new array contains all of the members of the old array and then the needle on the end of it. And this reducer only apply, uh, is run when it receives an event of the type save foo. And save foo is coming from this actions file where it is defined with the string foo underscore save. So the server or client sees a foo save. The reducer uh, sees that under foo is a reducer that looks for that very thing and then adds the needle onto the end. So to show you how this works in real time, I can switch the order of these where I'll be prepending each new item. So instead of seeing new items appear at the end, like you just did, then we're going to see them appearing on the beginning. So here we go. There's the 91, and then there's the 9, which is going to go at the beginning of the list, essentially consing it onto the list if you're into that kind of thing. So this is our reducer. It is responsible for managing the state of the piece of the state tree at the key called foo. And it's just, it's just pretty nice. It just does what it should. And we see these objects getting appended on the client side as well as on the server side. So here's a handful of things I'm, I'm digging about this architecture. Number one, you have plain old JavaScript objects managing your state in both client and server. I certainly love the optimistic aspect of being able to do most of your updates on the client 
Um, in practice, the server will be able to do things that the client is not able to do, and the server may have to send actions to the client as well to say like, hey, I timestamped this at a certain time, uh, update yourself to show this timestamp. Um, but basically, it's very handy if the client and server both have the same picture of state. You can reduce communication. Also, the server here, as its store changes in memory, it might decide to send some of those updates, or up to all of them, down to the Mongo database. But as soon as a new foo gets added to this array, this action can be sent out to other connected clients so that other connected clients are essentially applying the minimum uh, to, their, uh, to their stores. So in other words, you wouldn't have to send the entire uh, uh, foo and its current value, you just send the actions. This also gives you ability to uh, sometimes receive things in different orders than they were created. So you might have to be on the lookout for that. But it's essentially the same code running in both locations. The reducer exists in both locations. Uh, the main goal of dispatch RPC is to apply the action to the store and your action gets sent over the wire from the client action after the client stub is run, after validation is passes and the client stub is run, then your server method gets that action over here and can update its state. So it's a very small amount of code to get um, what, what could be bi-directional syncing going if you were um, pushing out these actions at the moment they're received. By pushing them out after they're applied to the store and not waiting for them to go to Mongo, I believe you can uh, save a lot of network round trips that'll make for a very fast app.